crofting has been with us for hundreds of years and it is a form of perhaps subsistence farming. Crofting is like small scale farming, um, like small holdings. Crofts are on the whole very uh, of small acreage, uh, whereas mainland farms understandably perhaps are 10 times, 20 times bigger. It's a lot more rural, so there's not as many, like you can't fit as many sheep, say, onto a croft here as you can, like, onto a croft in the mainland, like a farm. No. The crofting takes place mostly on the western seaboard of North Uist uh, because of the soil type there, which we call macher land. The macher uh, habitat is like a shell sand. It's a, a sandy soil structure, uh, like free draining, uh, it's like a dune habitat with uh, quite a good uh, high pH and is very good for crops. It's just been created over thousands of years, so it's very precious. It's quite rare. On Bernary, the crofting is still done very much the same way as it always has been. The whole macher is fully stocked and still ploughed and corn growing the way they've always done. They're keeping to the traditional ways of doing things. Macher land, which is generally very flat and very easily cultivated. And uh, it's a very thin soil, so uh, we, we don't deep plough, we shallow plough. Uh, the macher habitat is very important to us because uh, on, for various reasons, uh, the first one I would say is the cattle. Um, we winter the cattle on the macher. They graze this habitat and then in the summertime then we take the cattle off and all the, the plants flower and seed. Macher land uh, benefits from cropping and um, proper management. The other issue that we use the macher for is for cultivation. Um, we use a two-year uh, crop, two-year fallow system, so it's it's quite a low intensity again, it's not ploughed every year. The crops that we grow here are mostly oats and uh, we have fields of um, grass for silage and uh, these are fed to sheep and uh, cattle in particular. It's very, very sustainable. It's low input, uh, which suits um, the, the macher system. Is seaweed the main fertiliser you use? Years ago it was, and it was the only fertiliser used because the, all the crofters then were either full-time crofters or crofter fishermen. We have, well, there's seaweed available, uh, we use that. There's also the cattle, they, you know, they graze the, the, the habitat and then they, we, we use their dung there as well. Fields nowadays are on the whole fertilised using uh, artificial fertiliser imported from the mainland. We don't spray anything, so there's, there's a whole wide range of insects and they all have their own habitats. We have uh, plenty of buzzards, uh, lapwings are very plentiful, um, uh, we have stone chats, we have eagles nesting on the hills, um, we have sparrowhawks and uh, lots of uh, ravens, uh, crows. What's your own views of the, the macher that we have in Uist? Is it important to you and, you know, what does it mean? I think it's very important because it's unique to the islands and uh, it brings like an extra place for the animals to go and it's good for the winter time to feed them on. Yeah, and it's great for them to like shelter and carve and that sort of thing. Yeah. We also have so many rare plants, don't we? You know, the orchids and you know, there's little different habitats in between the, the macher area, there's little lagoons. Uh, the only issue that we have there with planting cereal oats on the macher is the, the grey lag geese. Uh, they come and destroy the crop. Barnacle geese, they go away uh, at April time. They never nest here. The grey lag the geese, they're, they're nesting here on the machers and on the offshore islands. The presence of uh, wild geese has been a, a thorn in our flesh for 20, 30 years 
and the governments centrally in Scotland uh, are not at all helpful in this matter. The dunes are forever changing and uh, you get areas they're just blowing with sand. The major drawback would be perhaps um, soil erosion because there's a lot of sand blow, especially in um, dry conditions. Rabbits also, when they're burrowing and then the wind gets in and starts a new dune or, or some sort of blowhole. So. I have noticed that the, the tide levels are rising very slowly, but the, the, the tides are rising. With the, the sea level expected to rise in the next few decades, that has an impact on, on, the, on that habitat. Uh, there could be erosion, you know, gales. All the, the machers and the areas that are cultivated for crops, they are very low and in years to come, if that tide continues to rise, it could be a danger of it bre the tide breaching onto the machers and grazing land. They say there's another island, it's not a flat eye, you look to the west of Aishi, that's disappeared long ago. So. Flat eye? Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. Probably with the water like rising and they might not, this might not be here in the next hundred years. Yeah, because it's eating away at the sand dunes and then it comes further in throughout and it'll come onto the Macher. I know where you live in Bernadette is, uh, you're quite a bit above sea level, but uh, you'll know a lot of other houses near the shore. Uh, as a younger person, do you think that could be a concern in years to come, that the tide could rise and get near houses? Well, my house isn't that close to the shore, so I don't think it will, but maybe in the future. My house will go a long time before yours. <laughs> Uh, most of the erosion happens in, in the winter time, I would say, with, yeah, with the, the high tides and the, the big gales. Have you seen a big difference in the erosion and that sort of thing? Like I think in this area um, there has been a, a big increase, yes, I would say. Along the western seaboard of our Macherland, uh, for example, where fences have been erected 10, 12 years ago, uh, they are no longer to be seen because of um, They've been either carried away by heavy seas or the sand has blown over them. It varies really, you know, some years with a bad storm you can lose uh, two, three metres and then you might not have any sort of for a while and it's quite hard to, to you know, to, to, to stop it really manage. because to manage it because it's the, the power of the tide, it's, it's pretty extreme. A long time ago there was uh, maran grass planted on the dunes to stabilise them because they were blown away badly mm -hmm. and uh, the maran grass was planted there mm -hmm. but now over the years that's spreading quite a lot in and it's spreading now into them grazing where the sheep and cattle are normally grazing and that's becoming a problem now because it's overtaking the grazing and it's spoiling some of the grazing. All the crofters used to be cutting the maran grass every year for thatching buyers and uh, even the, when they used to dry the corn in the old-fashioned way and taking the corn home. They used to uh, cut maran grass and put it on the top of the corn stacks to keep the water out of them all winter. So that nobody cuts maran grass now. Alistair was saying that they took loads of the <coughs> stones off the beach when they were building the road. And that's what he thinks has caused, you know, all the damage around the Kerstachruag and places like that. And he said he was, he was on the dozer, uh, taking the shingle away, and he said between the car park and over near the dig, he said, all he left was a white cliff in the sand. He took all the... Everything. Took everything away. It'd be very hard to, to, to stop, I think, because there's, there's miles of coastline and it would be probably have to be armoured with rock, and rock isn't available really. If there was help and uh, money available to protect the shoreline, and in whatever way building it up or shoring it up to protect it from the rising tide, uh, that might be needed. I think in certain areas around the airport at Balavanich, that has been that, well, that has been important. that has been done, and it's proved successful, but. On a large scale, I think it'd be 
it would be very, very tricky to do. Um, there definitely have been changes in the dune system, uh, where perhaps 20, 30 years ago there was a dune, it no longer exists, and um, similarly, uh, dunes do appear uh, in different places at different times. And again, at a slope and end, I think it's working, working north more and more. And then I remember John Lally Kyle, Alex, uh, Alan McIsaac's dad, he said to me, he says, oh, he says, uh, we won't see another generation after this. But I think he says, Bellas uh, is going to join on to Kirkivos yet. We also see it building in other areas, you know, in, in my dad's time, the, the sea was coming into these dunes and it's pushed out about 40 metres. Mm -hmm. And look at where the dig was a few years ago. And uh, it was right into the beach and everybody was thought, thought oh, no, that that's it away now. And then, I don't think I've ever seen this much shingle on top of what it, what it is now. It's, that is now. It gets Loch Savvy, uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. We've seen a difference here since the Bernary Causeway has been built. Uh, there's areas that are banking, the, the sand is pushing in now. That uh, before the causeway, uh, there was a channel there and the, the tide would keep that clear. Can you tell me if you've noticed any changes in the weather here in your lifetime? The weather is changing uh, slowly. It's uh, not so seasonal as it was. Uh, is not so reliable. We used to have sort of more uh, harsher winters with more snow but better summers. I do remember when I was young many many years ago and um, uh, we used to go around barefoot in lovely sunshine. Well in my lifetime I've seen um, definitely wetter in, and stormier in, in, in the US here. Um, in my dad's time, they used to have long dry summers and they'd make hay in the summer, And but now it's definitely wetter. Sunshine sometimes in the summer months now is at a premium and um, um, they're definitely, the, the, the climate has changed. This year we got about three months of easterly, northeasterly winds from late spring, early summer. and it's not very good for crofting. It's fine for a couple of weeks at the end of a wet winter to dry the place up, but not too much of it because it's always a cold, dry wind and nothing grows. And um, I'm sure you've seen a, a change yourselves even in, in your lifetime too with the, the weather. I think the weather seems to be changing every year and you don't know what to expect. Some years we get more storms than others. You might, some winters will go past and you'll only get a, a couple of small gales. We had one uh, very bad storm in 2005 and that was the worst that anybody can remember anywhere in the islands. It uh, was a devastating storm where sadly some lives were lost. I do remember it because uh, Andrew was uh, just a month from being born <laughs> and uh, we, we were more or less cut off. With It came when there was a spring tide and uh, uh, high tide and a low pressure and there was a lot of pressure behind the, and a westerly wind and it pushed, the, the, there was a lot of pressure behind the, the, the weather and uh, it forced the tide a lot higher than uh, it normally would. It was an awful storm. That uh, did a lot of damage and power and water was off for days and fold lines were down. Uh, slates off roofs, uh, corrugated sheeting flying around. And roads were closed, causeways were damaged. Some were submerged in the heavy seas. And on Bernary itself, because of a causeway between Bernary and North Hewis, that the, uh, the force behind it couldn't run through the sound and uh, the tide went up the macher and uh, took some bales and they just drifted away with the high tide and the tide's never ever been near them before or since. Very, very worrying and I hope it's once in a lifetime. Do you think things like that will get worse in the future due to climate change? 
Well, I would hope not, because at the time people were worried then that, it, oh, is this the way it's going to be? But uh, that's 14 years ago now, nearly 15, and uh, we haven't had any uh, anything like it since. Well, things have changed here over the, over the centuries. There used to be thousands of people. In the past, it was uh, mainly a manual task, uh, and there were more people on the island perhaps then. Since my father's time, the crofts and used have got bigger. You know, there are less people about, and the units have got larger. Nowadays, um, a lot of the crofts are very well me mechanised. In my dad's time and my grandfather's time, it was more or less like an existence, you know, you're just, you know, feeding yourselves, you made your own butter and jam and it's a huge commitment, you know, with livestock, you're, you're 24 hours, seven days a week really, just on hand. Uh, I'm just in my element really, being self-employed, you take uh, a decision in the morning what you're going to do. What are your own views on crofting in, in Uist? I think it's very good for Uist because lots of people can get involved in it and you could end up doing it for a living if you wanted to. Yeah, and it's a good like thing to do. Like when, like if you've just retired from a job, you could set up your own wee craft and maybe take that on as a career or hobby if you wanted to. Yeah. Crofting in the future, on in my opinion, is going to get more difficult. For crofting to continue, you have to have lots of different income streams. I think things will evolve, and there always will be crofting, but. It might be in some different guises, but, but uh, I think you have to have uh, lots of different uh, yeah, fingers in the pies, as it were. So, yeah. And are you thinking of getting involved in crossing, crofting yourselves? Yeah, I think I'd like to. I like working with the animals and enjoy helping. So Yeah, I think I like the machinery part of the crofting and the quads and tractors and things like that. So. I'm of the opinion that if um, macher land is uh, cultivated in the manner in which it's been done over many, many years uh, and uh, fertilised accordingly, that um, uh, there is a good future for macher cropping. So who do you think are the best people to be managing the macher? Uh, naturally, crofters. Cut. <laughs>